Okay, I'm talking to Stephen Deal, who is the Chief Technical Officer of Adjoint, and he and his company are looking at how to implement law on the blockchain and how that's potentially going to completely shake up the legal profession. So, Stephen, thank you for talking to me, and do you maybe want to kick off by talking a little bit about your project and what you're working on? Yeah, thanks for having me here today. Um, so I run a company called Adjoint Inc. Uh, so we're particularly interested in building technology around uh, asking questions of smart contracts in much the same way you would ask questions of a legal contract. Uh, so my company is largely a technology company. Uh, we build uh, tooling and infrastructure around uh, creating settlement networks for the capital market space in which smart contracts can be deployed, which uh, fair and faithfully model uh, real world contracts. Um, so smart contracts themselves are uh, kind of a misnomer because they're neither smart nor contracts. Um, do, you, do you want to talk maybe about, about what smart contracts are, what your definition of those is? Indeed. So a smart contract uh, is a digital representation of the time varying rights and obligations between counterparties that's synchronized on a distributed database. Um, a smart contract is effectively a description about the touch points between different counterparties and how they have to agree or disagree about some fact at some point in time in a way that can't be refuted. Um, so a large portion of traditional contracts actually involve basically you know, the synchronization of uh, certain facts or certain assertions about ownership or value flow or membership uh, over time based on people agreeing about some fact. So. What's interesting about smart contracts is that we can use the blockchain as this uh, single source of global truth to uh, synchronize counterparty agreements um, in a way that can model uh, traditional contracts. And we can take a traditional contract, uh, distill out the touch points between the counterparties, and then encode that in logic, which is then run on the blockchain. And that's also without the need for a third party. Exactly. So this all runs on this global distributed network, which doesn't require you know, third parties to intermediate between which clearly is tremendously revolutionary and could disrupt basically every business on the planet, potentially. Indeed, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of venues for improving traditional workflows, yeah. Do you want to talk maybe about the... So right now we have smart contracts, which is uh, you know, the code that is run on the blockchain, which, mm -hmm. which defines these agreements. But then we have the actual law and actual contracts that are legally enforceable through traditional space. And right now, those two things are being bridged. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about how those two things interlock, interplay, how those two, how those two things are being uh, knitted together? Yeah, so at the heart of what, um, what we aim to do with smart contracts and what we've traditionally done with legal contracts is describe some workflow between counterparties. Um, the way these things, uh, way these processes are being bridged at the moment, uh, is that we're interested in uh, taking traditional contracts or traditional agreements about workflows and distilling them down into uh, a process that can be automated. Um, so uh, the question we need to ask about an implementation of a traditional contract in terms of a smart contract is, uh, does it preserve the same structure as the original contract? So uh, what my company's effectively focused on building is a set of analysis tools for uh, you know, business users to basically ask questions of the contracts themselves uh, so they can interrogate whether uh, you know, a digital implementation of a traditional contract uh, actually has the properties that they desire. So we do this through a process known as formal methods, which distills uh, a digital representation of a contract uh, in terms of the time varying rights and obligations of the counterparties down into a mathematical formalism in which we can interrogate uh, specific properties about events over time, uh, whether events will happen, whether they won't happen, if an event happens, will something else happen, uh, in a description language, uh, which can be phrased as uh, you know, asking business questions of the smart contract, in much the way you would ask business questions to a barrister or a lawyer. Okay, great. So we've talked about the very high level technical stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you think this stuff is going to change the legal profession on the ground? So I think um, as these technologies become more prevalent, I think uh, a lot of uh, lawyers are going to have to become a bit more um, versed in technology. You know, what is a digital signature? What is non-repudiation? What does it mean to exist on a global network? What does that mean with regards to jurisdiction? Um, these are questions. You know, what is identity? It's a big question. Um, 
How does identity tie to you know, say, cryptographic credentials on a blockchain? These are questions that really we don't have good answers as technologists, and I think um, the traditional law profession doesn't have good answers, or they haven't historically. Uh, so I think those are kind of questions that we need to hammer out together with each other. Um, and I think they're questions that uh, are going to be extremely important for uh, building the next generation of smart contracts. Do you think that uh, do you think that technologies like this are going to replace lawyers? No, of course not. I mean, most contracts are bespoke. Um, so I think there's always going to be uh, the need for you know uh, people to interact with other people to reconcile differences and to come to agreements. Um, I think, however, there are a large portion of contracts that are not bespoke, uh, which are you know largely the ones that are you know traded as instruments in the financial industry or you know, renter agreements or you know notary services, which are um, very automatable. Uh, they're currently done via very traditional methods. You know, if you go to a notary, they take a piece of wax and stamp it with some <laughs> stamp by a, <laughs> a trusted person. You know, these kind of services are um, probably replaceable, but am I going to, you know, uh, replace my general counsel when it uh, comes to me, and when I come to him and ask him about uh, questions about, you know, compliance and immigration law? These things are still obviously not automatable. So obviously smart contracts are not going to replace um, uh, most of the law profession. I think. Okay. And uh, what other industries do you think are really going to be shaken up in this way by, by not just smart contracts, but blockchain in general? Clearly the legal profession is one of the biggest ones, but uh, what other ones do you think are going to be turned over by this? Well, I've always thought of blockchain as basically just being kind of the next generation of database solutions. Uh, they're just database solutions that have nice properties about uh, distribution and identity baked into them. Uh, so if you ask yourself what industries can be revolutionized by the blockchain, I think what industries have been revolutionized by the advent of IT and database solutions, and that's nearly everything. Right, all of them. Nearly everything. So if you think about the kind of the big idea around the blockchain is that we can construct uh, globally consistent append-only data stores in which we can record facts about human activities, which is a very general assertion, uh, and I think it's going to be widely applicable to a lot of things that none of us can even foresee. Do you have a sense of a time scale in which maybe different waves uh, of, of change are going to happen? Yeah, so I think what you're seeing right now with a lot of the hype and a lot of uh, the interest we're seeing from a lot of different sectors is kind of just the industry come to grasp with what it means to have this global data store and what we can do with those things. So it's a lot... Not all that dissimilar from what we saw in the early '90s, uh, where we had the dot-com bubble, and you know we saw a lot of you know frenzy and interest in the technology that kind of mostly went nowhere and caused a lot of harm and did some good things, left some damage behind, but you know ultimately left us with you know what we take for the internet today, uh, and we're all now connected to this everywhere with our phones. And uh, what you're seeing right now is kind of the early stage of something that's going to be quite big in ways I don't think a lot of us can foresee. Right. Do you think that we're, in the short term, do you think we're in a speculator bubble with crypto and ICO and things like that as people rush into the early hype phase? Almost certainly. Almost certainly. Okay. Just flat out. No, thank you. No, no. <laughs> just yes. <laughs> I think anybody who looks at the space would obviously come to that conclusion, yes. Okay. All right. Well, Stephen, thank you very much for talking to me and great luck with your efforts. Yes. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Okay.